Writing a seminar paper involves several key steps to ensure that your work is well-structured, thoroughly researched, and effectively communicated. Here's a guide to help you write a seminar paper. 1. Understand the seminar requirements. Topic. Ensure you have a clear understanding of the seminar topic or theme. Length. Know the required length of the paper, e.g., 10 to 15 pages. Format. Follow any specific formatting guidelines, e.g., MLA, APA, Chicago. Audience. Consider the level of knowledge your audience has on the topic. 2. Choose a focused topic. Select a specific aspect of the broader seminar theme that interests you and is feasible to cover in the required length. Ensure that your topic is narrow enough to be covered in detail, but broad enough to find sufficient research materials. 3. Conduct thorough research. Primary sources. Gather original texts, documents, or data relevant to your topic. Secondary sources. Review scholarly articles, books, and other publications that provide analysis or critique of your topic. Notes. Take detailed notes and organize them by themes or sections. 4. Develop a thesis statement. Formulate a clear and concise thesis statement that outlines the main argument or purpose of your paper. Your thesis should guide the entire paper, providing a roadmap for your research and analysis. 5. Create an outline. Introduction. Introduce your topic, provide background information, and state your thesis. Literature review, if required, summarize existing research and highlight gaps that your paper will address. Body sections. Divide your paper into sections that each focus on a specific point or argument supporting your thesis. Each section should include Subheading. Title of the section. Topic sentence. The main point of the section. Evidence. Data, quotes, or references supporting the point. Analysis. Your interpretation or analysis of the evidence. Conclusion. Summarize your main points, restate the thesis in light of the discussion, and suggest implications or future research directions. 6. Write the draft. Introduction. Write a compelling introduction that grabs the reader's attention and introduces the topic and thesis. Body. Write the body sections, following your outline. Ensure each paragraph transitions smoothly to the next. Conclusion. Conclude by summarizing your findings and restating your thesis, emphasizing the significance of your research. 7. Cite your sources. Properly cite all sources used in your research. This includes in-text citations and a bibliography or works cited page, according to the required citation style. 8. Revise and edit. Content. Check for coherence, clarity, and logical flow of ideas. Ensure each section supports your thesis. Style. Ensure your writing style is formal and appropriate for an academic setting. Grammar and spelling. Proofread for any grammatical, punctuation, or spelling errors. Format. Double-check the formatting of the paper, including margins, fonts, and citation style. 9. Prepare the presentation, if required. If you are required to present your seminar paper, prepare a concise and clear presentation that highlights the key points of your paper. Use visual aids, if appropriate, to enhance your presentation. 10. Practice. Rehearse your presentation multiple times to ensure smooth delivery. Be prepared to answer questions from the audience. Example structure of a seminar paper. Title page. Title of the paper. Your name. Course subject. Date. Abstract, if required. A brief summary of the paper's contents, usually 150 to 250 words. Introduction. Background information. Research question or thesis statement. Overview of the paper's structure. Main body. Section 1. Title. Discussion. Evidence. Analysis. Section 2. Title. Discussion. Evidence. Analysis. Section 3. Title. Discussion. Evidence. Analysis. Conclusion. Summary of findings. Restate the thesis. Implications or recommendations. References Bibliography. List all the sources cited in your paper. Appendices, if necessary. Include any additional materials that support your paper, such as charts, graphs, or questionnaires. A good seminar paper demonstrates several key qualities that contribute to its effectiveness, clarity, and impact. Here are the essential qualities of a strong seminar paper. 1. Clear and focused thesis. Defined argument. A good seminar paper has a clear and well-defined thesis statement that outlines the main argument or purpose of the paper. 
Focus. The thesis is specific and narrow enough to be thoroughly addressed within the paper's scope. 2. Comprehensive research. Depth of knowledge. The paper reflects a deep understanding of the topic, supported by thorough research from credible primary and secondary sources. Balanced perspective. It considers multiple viewpoints, showing a balanced and critical approach to the subject. 3. Logical structure and organization. Coherent flow. The paper is well organized, with a logical progression of ideas from the introduction to the conclusion. Clear sections. It is divided into clearly defined sections, each addressing a specific aspect of the thesis. Effective transitions. Smooth transitions between paragraphs and sections enhance readability. 4. Critical analysis. Insightful interpretation. The paper goes beyond summarizing sources by providing original analysis and interpretation. Critical thinking. It critically examines the evidence, identifying strengths, weaknesses, and implications. Synthesis. The paper integrates various sources and perspectives to create a cohesive argument. 5. Strong evidence and support. Relevant evidence. The paper uses relevant, accurate, and up-to-date evidence to support its claims. Proper citations. All sources are correctly cited, following the appropriate academic style, e.g., MLA, APA, Chicago. Integration of sources. Quotes, data, and references are seamlessly integrated into the text to support the argument. 6. Clarity and precision. Clear writing. The language is clear, precise, and free of jargon, making the paper accessible to its intended audience. Conciseness. The paper avoids unnecessary wordiness and sticks to the point. Formal tone. The writing maintains a formal, academic tone appropriate for scholarly work. 7. Originality. Unique perspective. The paper offers an original perspective or insight into the topic, contributing to the academic discussion. Creative approach. It may employ innovative methodologies, frameworks, or interpretations. 8. Engaging introduction. Captivating start. The introduction grabs the reader's attention and clearly outlines the paper's purpose and scope. Contextual background. It provides necessary background information to situate the topic within its broader context. 9. Conclusive summary. Effective conclusion. The paper ends with a strong conclusion that summarizes the key findings and reinforces the thesis. Implications and future directions. It may suggest implications for future research or practical applications of the findings. 10. Proper formatting and presentation adherence to guidelines. The paper follows all formatting and structural guidelines set by the instructor or institution. Clean presentation. It is free of grammatical, spelling, and typographical errors, ensuring a professional appearance. Consistent citation style. All citations and references are consistently formatted according to the required academic style. 11. Engagement with seminar themes relevance to seminar. The paper is directly related to the seminar's themes or objectives and contributes meaningfully to the seminar discussions. Interdisciplinary. Awareness. If applicable, the paper. Acknowledges and integrates relevant interdisciplinary perspectives. By embodying these qualities, a seminar paper will not only meet academic standards but also provide valuable insights and contribute meaningfully to the academic community. A seminar paper typically consists of several essential parts that ensure it is well organized, clear, and academically rigorous. Here are the inevitable parts of a seminar paper. 1. Title page. Title of the paper. A clear and descriptive title that reflects the content and focus of the paper. Author's name. Your full name. Course subject. The course or seminar for which the paper is. Being written. Institution. The name of your academic institution. Date. The submission date. 2. Abstract, if required. Summary. A brief summary, usually 150 to 250 words, of the paper's content, including the research question, methodology, main findings, and conclusions. Purpose. Helps readers quickly understand the purpose and scope of your paper. 3. Introduction. Background information. Provides context for the topic, introducing the main issues or debates related to it. Research question or thesis statement. Clearly states the main argument or purpose of the paper. Overview. Outlines the structure of the paper, giving the reader a roadmap of what to expect. 4. Literature review, if required. Survey of sources. 
summarizes and discusses existing research relevant to your topic. Identification of gaps, highlights gaps in the literature that your paper will address. Theoretical framework, discusses the theories or concepts that will guide your analysis. 5. Main body. Structured sections, the body is divided into sections, each focusing on a specific aspect of your thesis. Subheadings, Clearly labeled sections help organize the content. Evidence and analysis. Each section includes a discussion of evidence data, quotes, examples, and analysis that supports the thesis. Logical flow. Ideas are presented in a logical order, with smooth transitions between sections. 6. Conclusion. Summary of main points. Recaps the main arguments or findings discussed in the paper. Restatement of thesis reinforces the thesis in light of the evidence presented. Implications, discusses the broader implications of your findings for the field of study. Future research, suggests areas for further research or unanswered questions. 7. References bibliography. Complete citations, a list of all the sources cited in the paper, formatted according to the required citation style, e.g., MLA, APA, Chicago. Consistency, Ensure that all citations are complete and consistently formatted. 8. Appendices, if necessary. Supplementary material. Includes additional material that supports the paper but is too detailed to include in the main body, e.g., raw data, detailed calculations, questionnaires. Reference in the text. Make sure to reference the appendices in the main body where relevant. 9. Footnotes or endnotes, if required. Additional. Comments. Used for additional comments, explanations, or references that don't fit neatly into the text. Citation notes. May also be used to provide additional citation details if required by the citation style. 10. Table of contents, if required. Outline of sections. Lists the sections and subsections of the paper along with their page numbers. Easy navigation. Helps readers navigate through the paper, especially in longer documents. By including these parts, a seminar paper is structured in a way that is logical, comprehensive, and aligned with academic standards. When writing a seminar paper, it's easy to make mistakes or have misconceptions that can undermine the quality of the work. Here are some common pitfalls to watch out for. 1. Lack of a clear thesis. Mistake. Writing the paper without a clear, focused thesis statement. Misconception. Believing that simply discussing a topic broadly is enough. Solution. Develop a specific, arguable thesis that guides the entire paper. 2. Insufficient research. Mistake. Relying on too few or unreliable sources. Misconception. Assuming that a few sources or general knowledge are sufficient. Solution. Conduct thorough research using a variety of credible academic sources, including primary and secondary materials. 3. Core organization. Mistake. Failing to structure the paper logically, leading to a confusing or disjointed narrative. Misconception. Believing that ideas can be presented in any order as long as they're all included. Solution. Create a detailed outline before writing and ensure that each section flows logically from one to the next. 4. Weak introduction. Mistake. Starting the paper with vague or irrelevant information. Misconception. Assuming the introduction only needs to be a broad overview. Solution. Make the introduction engaging and clearly state the research question or thesis, along with a brief outline of the paper. 5. Overloading with information mistake. Including too much information, overwhelming the reader with details. Misconception. Thinking that more information automatically makes the paper stronger. Solution. Be selective with the information you include, focus on supporting your thesis and avoid tangential details. 6. Lack of critical analysis. Mistake. Merely summarizing sources instead of analyzing them. Misconception. Believing that summarizing others' work is sufficient. Solution. Critically engage with sources, offering your own analysis and interpretation to support your argument. 7. Ignoring counterarguments. Mistake. Failing to address opposing viewpoints or counterarguments. Misconception. Assuming that presenting only supporting evidence makes the argument stronger. Solution. Acknowledge and refute counter-arguments to strengthen your position and demonstrate critical thinking. 8. Inconsistent or incorrect citations mistake. Incorrectly formatting citations or failing to cite sources at all. 
Misconception. Thinking that citation style and accuracy are minor details. Solution. Follow the required citation style meticulously and ensure all sources are properly cited. 9. Plagiarism. Mistake. Copying text or ideas without proper attribution. Misconception. Believing that rephrasing someone else's ideas without citation is not plagiarism. Solution. Always credit the original source of ideas, even if you paraphrase, and use plagiarism detection tools to check your work. 10. Overly complex language. Mistake. Using overly complex language or jargon that obscures meaning. Misconception. Thinking that using complex language makes the paper sound more scholarly. Solution. Aim for clarity and precision in your writing, using complex terminology only when necessary and ensuring it's well explained. 11. Weak conclusion. Mistake. Ending the paper abruptly or without a strong conclusion. Misconception. Believing that a simple summary is enough for a conclusion. Solution. Restate the thesis in light of the evidence discussed, and highlight the significance of your findings, possibly suggesting future research directions. 12. Failure to follow guidelines. Mistake. Not adhering to the seminar's specific formatting, length, or content requirements. Misconception. Assuming that general academic writing standards apply to all papers equally. Solution. Carefully review and follow all instructions provided for the seminar paper, including format, length, and submission guidelines. 13. Neglecting the editing process. Mistake. Submitting the first draft without thorough revision and proofreading. Misconception. Believing that good ideas outweigh the importance of grammar, spelling, and style. Solution. Revise multiple drafts, focusing on both content and mechanics, and consider having someone else review your paper. 14. Over-reliance on a single source mistake. Relying too heavily on one source for information or analysis. Misconception. Thinking that a single comprehensive source is enough to build your entire argument. Solution. Diversify your sources to provide a well-rounded perspective and strengthen your argument. 15. Ignoring feedback. Mistake. Failing to incorporate feedback from peers, instructors, or previous assignments. Misconception. Assuming that past feedback doesn't apply to the current paper. Solution. Reflect on and apply any relevant feedback to improve the quality of your seminar paper. Avoiding these common mistakes and misconceptions will help you create a seminar paper that is well-structured, thoroughly researched, and clearly articulated, leading to a more successful academic performance. Here's a simplified outline for a sample seminar paper related to English literature. The focus will be on analyzing the theme of memory in Toni Morrison's novel Beloved. This example is intended to provide a general structure and style rather than a complete paper. Title page. Title, The Haunting Power of Memory, An Analysis of Toni Morrison's Beloved. Author, Your Name. Course, Seminar on American Literature. Institution, Your Institution. Date, Submission Date. Abstract. This paper explores the theme of memory in Toni Morrison's Beloved, examining how the novel portrays the psychological and emotional impact of slavery on its characters. The analysis focuses on the ways in which memory shapes identity and the complex interplay between past and present in the narrative. Through close reading and theoretical frameworks, this paper argues that Beloved uses memory as a tool to confront and critique the legacies of slavery in American history. Introduction Toni Morrison's Beloved is a profound exploration of the haunting legacy of slavery and its enduring impact on the African American community. Central to the novel is the theme of memory, which functions as both a source of identity and trauma for the characters. This paper seeks to analyze how Morrison uses memory to illustrate the psychological scars left by slavery and the ways in which these memories are both repressed and revisited throughout the narrative. The thesis of this paper is that Morrison employs memory as a narrative device to underscore the inescapable presence of the past in the lives of her characters. Literature Review Several scholars have examined the role of memory in Beloved, noting its significance in the construction of the novel's narrative and thematic framework. According to Deborah Horvitz, 1998, memory in Beloved is not merely a recollection of the past but a living force that shapes the present. Kimberly Chabot Davis, 2001, highlights the communal aspect of memory, arguing that Morrison uses collective memory to address the shared trauma of slavery.
This paper builds on these interpretations by exploring how Morrison intertwines personal and collective memory to create a complex narrative structure that challenges the reader to confront the horrors of slavery. Main Body 1. Memory as Identity Morrison's characters in Beloved are deeply influenced by their memories, which are integral to their sense of self. Setha, the protagonist, is haunted by the memory of her deceased daughter, Beloved, whose ghost symbolizes the inescapable past. Through Setha's experiences, Morrison illustrates how memory can both sustain and destroy an individual's identity. The concept of rememory, as introduced in the novel, suggests that memories are not confined to the past but are ever present, affecting how characters navigate their lives. 2. The interplay between memory and trauma. The novel presents memory as a double edged sword, it is a source of pain and healing. For Setha, recalling the past is an act of survival, yet it also brings unbearable pain. The character of Paul D. struggles with repressed memories of his time in Sweet Home, which resurface as he interacts with Setha. Morrison uses these characters to demonstrate how trauma can fracture memory, making it difficult to distinguish between what is remembered and what is repressed. 3. Collective Memory and Historical Legacy Beloved extends the theme of memory beyond individual characters to the collective experience of African Americans. Morrison portrays the community's shared memory of slavery as a powerful force that binds them together. The character of Baby Suggs embodies this collective memory, offering a space for communal healing in her, Meadow Sermons. Morrison suggests that confronting and sharing painful memories is essential for the community's survival and resistance against the erasure of their history. Conclusion Toni Morrison's beloved intricately weaves the theme of memory into its narrative, using it as a vehicle to explore the enduring effects of slavery on individual and collective identities. Memory in Beloved is portrayed as a living entity that both haunts and shapes the characters, reflecting the complex relationship between past and present. Morrison's exploration of memory challenges readers to consider the ways in which history is remembered, forgotten, and retold, highlighting the necessity of acknowledging and confronting the traumas of the past. References Chabot Davis, Kimberly, Postmodern Blackness, Toni Morrison's Beloved and the End of History, 20th Century Literature, Volume 47, Number 4, 2001, pp. 424-448. Horvitz. Deborah, Nameless Ghosts, Possession and Dispossession in Beloved, Studies in American Fiction, Volume 17, Number 2, 1998, pp. 157-167. Morrison, Tony, Beloved, Alfred A. Knopf, 1987. Appendices, if necessary. Any additional materials, such as detailed analyses of specific passages, charts, or diagrams, can be included here. This outline provides a framework for writing a seminar paper in English literature. The key is to focus on a clear thesis, conduct thorough research, and provide a well-organized analysis supported by evidence from both the text and scholarly sources.